awesome people. Mr. C here, super pumped that you are continuing this whole number multiplication unit with us. Today we are working on the fourth grade standard. Let me show you the standard. Here it is. I've got Common Core and because I'm in Missouri right now, I threw the Missouri Learning Standard on there still. Here it is. The big thing we are focusing on today is working on multiplying the whole number up to four digits by a one digit number. And we're also kind of getting our feet wet with some of the two digit by two digit multiplication. All right, so let's take a look at a couple other things. First things first, if you have not subscribed, click the subscribe button. I would love for you to be notified on any new videos that drop. Join us in this math journey. It's a ton of fun just trying to make math more understandable and challenging for everyone. If you didn't have a chance, in the description below, there is the fifth grade standards video. I've dropped that already. Check it out. It's super helpful. And then I also will have the third grade standards multiplication video soon as well. I'll put it in the descriptions so that way you can access it. I really want you to be able to see how your learning builds upon itself. So take a look and see what you learned in third grade, what you're learning in fourth grade, what you learn in fifth grade, and see how it all progresses. All right, so check those out. Super pumped that you're here with us today. Today we're just going to do a couple of example problems from the two videos that we've done before. If you didn't get to watch those, make sure you tune in. Um, these are just going to be some example problems. So if you're looking for more teaching on how to do and how to solve each of the problems, check it out. But if you've already watched those, here are a couple of videos for you um, or a couple of example problems that are going to show you how to solve some problems. All right, so here is our first problem. So we're going to solve 296 times 7. Okay, so area model is what we've been using a lot, and I'm going to continue to use that. I'm going to draw my area model again. A lot of people call it a window. Some people call it a square, a rectangle, whatever you want to call it works for me, but this is what we need. So we're going to break apart this number just like we have done in previous grades. I've got 296, so I've got two hundreds. I've got nine tens, so that's 90. And I always leave myself just barely enough room. And I've got six ones here, so that's gonna be a six. I put my small addition symbol because 200 plus 90 plus six gives me 296. Now our number over here is a seven, that's all there is, so I just put a seven right over here on the side. Now let's do some multiplication. I'm going to touch the numbers and say what it is. So 7 times 200, well 7 times 2 is 14. Ask yourself here, is my answer 14 or what needs to happen next? Hopefully, you remember, we need to attach these two zeros, so throw those on there. Next, we need to do 7 times 90. 7 times 90. Well, 7 times 9 is what? 63. How many zeros do we attach? Boom. 1. 630. Last area model spot. We've got 7 times 6. 7 times 6 is 42. Now you need to add all these up because with this area model, what you do is you're taking a larger multiplication problem and breaking it into chunks. And to get your final answer, to get your final product, you've got to add all of these numbers up. This is where I have to be careful because I will make mistakes and students normally make a lot of mistakes here if they do not line up the correct place values. Let's see, I need 42 up here. Notice I put the 42, the 4 was in the tens column, the 2 is in the ones column. Make sure you don't make a mistake there. All right, I always go from greatest to least. Now I'm going to add these numbers up, slowing myself down, thinking through it. 0 plus 0 plus 2 is 2. 0 plus 3 plus 4 is 7. 4 plus 6 in the hundreds column is a 10. 1 plus 1 is 2. So it looks like we should be getting an answer of 2,072 
for this problem, 296 times 7. If you did not get this correct, take a look at it, pause the video, see where you made your mistake at. Okay, I didn't mention this at the beginning, and I should have. Growth mindset is so important to being successful in math, and so make sure you have the right mindset. Come into this being okay with struggling, being okay, being okay with making mistakes, and using those mistakes to learn and get better. Okay, mistakes help our brain grow. All right, so look at this video, watch this part again, redo the problem, see where you're making your mistakes, and then let's try another one. All right, second problem, we've got 1,562 times three. As you can tell, I've already set up my area model. For this problem here, I'm gonna do area model first, and then I'm going to do standard algorithm, okay? I highly recommend pausing the video and trying this problem on your own, and then watching me and kind of seeing, you know, are you getting it correct? Where are you getting stuck at? Where are you getting lost? And use my guidance to kind of help you. All right, so I went ahead and set mine up. I'm going to break apart 1,562. Take a look at it. How many thousands do you have? We've got 1,000. So I've got that. Next, I've got 500s. Take a look and see how many tens you have. Looks like we've got six tens, which gives us 60. And then last, we have two ones, which gives us two. Put my small addition sign. Again, I think this is a great strategy to use. It helps you. 1,000 plus 500 plus 60 plus two. If you add it up, you're going to get 1,562. It's just breaking this apart. Next, ask yourself, what are we going to write over here? Hmm. Well, hopefully you're thinking to yourself, Mr. C, Mr. C, put the three, put the three, Mr. C. Hopefully you're saying that, all right? You are going to put a three over here because that's our other number. Now let's multiply. Now we're going to touch some numbers and touch where we're multiplying. So three times a thousand. Three times a thousand is three thousand. All right, what are we multiplying next? Three times 500. Three times 500 is, well, I don't know about you, but I don't have my 500 times tables memorized. But there is a shortcut. What is that shortcut? What is that strategy that we have? Well, let's do three times five. That's 15. How many zeros do we attach? Boom, 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 boom. Two zeros. Okay, so we've got 1,500 there. Next, we're going to do 3 times 60. 3 times 60. Well, what is 3 times 6? 3 times 6 is 18. How many zeros do we attach? 1. All right, what are we doing last? 3 times 2. 3 times 2 gives us 6. There we go. All right, at this point, hopefully you've gotten this part correct. If not, pause the video, watch it again, see where your mistake is, figure out where you're struggling at, okay? Again, it's really important to be able to find your mistake. If you can find your mistake, you're gonna be just fine. Now, what are we doing next? All right, what, are we need to, what do we need to do next to get our final answer? And I encourage you to pause the video, try it out, see what you get for your final answer and then join me back here. So let's make sure that I write down all of these numbers correctly. So I've got 3,000, then I've got 1,500. Notice I am writing the numbers as neat as I can, which hopefully this isn't a secret. It's not very neat. All right, but I'm trying my best here. Make sure you are lining the numbers up in the correct place values. You put all the ones in the ones column, the tens in the tens, hundreds, thousands, and so on. Okay, so let's add all this up. The ones column, that gives us six. The tens column gives us eight. The hundreds column gives us six. The thousands column gives us four. And it looks like using area model, we're getting an answer of 4,686. 
Well, let's try using the standard algorithm. We should get the same answer. Let's see. Let's see if we get 4,686. So I'm going to change my colors. Let's go with this green color. So we were doing 1,562 times 3 is what we were trying to solve. So trying to see if we get the same answer using this strategy. First things first, we need to multiply 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Next, we need to multiply 3 times 6. Or 3 times 60 is what we're technically doing. 3 times 6 is 18. So the 8 goes here. What do we do with the 1? Hopefully you're saying to yourself, we put it above the five in the hundreds place. What do we multiply next? We're gonna multiply three times five. So three times five is 15, plus the one is 16. What do we do with that one? We need to carry it, regroup. I always mark out the number I've already used because I don't know about you, my brain has a million things going on. I've got to do that to keep track of it so that way I don't get lost. Finally, I need to multiply 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 1 is 4, and that's also giving us an answer of 4,686. Both strategies give you the same answer. Notice though, standard algorithm did not take me as long. Math is not about how quickly you solve it, okay? I don't care how fast you solve a problem. Teachers do not need to care how fast you solve problems. What matters though is getting the answers correct, but also being efficient. And what we mean by that is by being efficient, you want to be able to solve problems in a timely manner. It means that you're not the first person done. You're not flying through there and getting all of your answers. It means that you come up with a method, a strategy that's efficient, that you can get done and move through it and work through it at a good pace. Standard algorithm took me way less time than area model. All right, but I highly recommend start out learning area model, master it this way. Once you've mastered area model, then start challenging yourself with the standard algorithm because it's going to be really helpful to know how to do it that way. Final problem we're going to do here today, it's going to be 34 times 12. Notice it is a two digit by two digit multiplication problem. We've got two digits here, we've got two digits here. So that means that we're going to have a little bit more extra work here. A little bit challenging. Again, I always like to challenge you right at the end of our lesson to kind of get you ready for what's coming next. Take this as kind of a challenge to kind of get you ready. Here we go. Let's take a look at it. We're going to do the same thing we've done before. We're going to take this 34 and break it apart. So the first thing we have is 30. All right, we've got 30. Now, how many ones do we have here? How many ones? got four ones so make sure you put your four over here small addition symbol because 30 plus 4 equals 34 all right when you add that up it equals 34 now let's take 12 and break 12 apart how many tens do we have We've got one ten so notice I'm gonna put a ten here and I need to break my area model up again okay I have to break that up again because what do we still have? What number do we still need to write over here? We need to do 10 plus what number to give us 12? 10 plus, well, we've got two ones, and that's what we're going to put over here. So 10 plus 2, if we add that up, boom, it'll give us an answer of 12. All right, so that's why we're doing that. That's the extra step that's part of this. Now we're just gonna multiply, just like you've done before, just like you did on the first and second problems, just like we did in our previous videos. The only difference now is that there's another number down here. There's a two down here that we have to multiply by, but nothing changes, so watch this. We're gonna do 10 times 30. 10 times 30, again, a shortcut, a strategy. You know what one times three is. One times three is three. What do we do with these zeros? 
oh, I hope you did not say add the zeros. When you say add zeros, I always tell students, they'll be like, Mr. C, you need to add the zeros, add the two zeros. And this is what I always do, I always do this. Okay, I'll add two zeros, three plus zero plus zero. All right, that gives me three, so my answer is three. And they're like, uh, uh, no, no, that's not what I meant. And I'm like, all right, we gotta be careful with our math language, you gotta be specific. And what we're doing here is we're attaching these two zeros because they're basically placeholders for us. So 10 times 30 gives us 300. Now do 10 times four, 10 times four is 40. You're probably have already filled out these other two sections. Two times 30 is 60. And finally, two times four is eight. Now we need to add all of this up. Let's see and make sure I write them down correctly. There's 300, 60, 40. Where am I writing this eight at? Am I writing this eight over here? Am I writing the eight in the middle? Or am I writing the eight over here on the right? Hopefully, you wrote it all the way over here on the right because it's in the ones column. You have to put your place values correct. So here we go. Zero plus zero plus zero plus eight is eight. Next we have six plus four. So take a look at that six plus four in the tens column. So six plus four in the tens column gives us 10 regroup. Now we add three plus one in the hundreds and we're getting an answer of 408. That right there would be our final answer. Nice job on this. I always like to end with a challenge. Again, math is all about having the right mindset, being okay with saying I don't know something yet and giving it a shot. So I highly recommend watch this video over, try them again on your own, give yourself some more problems, keep working at it. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you know when new videos drop. Thanks for tuning in. I've got third grade standards coming up soon, so be on the lookout for that. That's all I have for you today. Mr. C, out.